Jacob here. Today we're going to be doing an overview of the Santok from Aopia. This is the medium fighter of the Aopia manufacturer. The Santok would of course go nicely alongside the light fighter, the Cartawal. Aopia, if I'm even pronouncing that correctly, is a manufacturer of Cheyenne origin, but do of course produce ships for human use, similarly to how Hesperia do their business, by taking the alien ship and then putting a seat in it for a human, and perhaps translating controls, instruction manuals, etc. I've researched the Santok a fair amount, and so what I say here is backed by research. What I don't mention here either means there is no evidence of it, or I simply didn't find this research, or didn't feel the need to mention it. As always, see the chapters for whatever you are interested in. I do somewhat ramble, so these may not be entirely accurate, with my own added speculations and theories as always. But for now, let's roll the intro. Like most ships in the verse, you can't typically get your hands on them as and when you wish. In the case of the Santok, you'll have to wait for Alien Week, which is a week or two away as of the recording of this video. You can also wait for IAE, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, in November. Here you'll be able to obtain 10 year insurance durations, unlike at Alien Week, where you can obtain only 6 month durations. In my opinion, Alien Week is for upgrading to alien ships rather than outright buying. There isn't a concierge game package that has this ship other than the Legatus pack, that being the mortgage worthy deposit price. So that idea in itself is pretty much out the window for most people. The last option is of course the Grey Market, of which I've seen prices of 195 USD. That was approximately the War Bond original price, if I recall. The Santok will be Aopia's second entry into the verse alongside the Cartwall. The Cartwall is very much a ship I quite like, as it's very nimble and fairly fast, and has okay weapons. The Santok, however, is of course a medium fighter, so it does a lot of things better, but only lots of things for the same reason. Given that it is a medium fighter, it does this typically in a damage perspective, but certainly less in areas such as speed and manoeuvrability. However, the Cartawal is a very manoeuvrable ship, and so I'd expect the Santok to inherit this to an extent, and so it could be a very effective ship with that in mind. The Santok ship is currently the biggest Aopia ship that will be in the verse until possibly the cargo ship, or perhaps the light bomber that exists called the Volper. The Santok was recently put onto the progress tracker, and is due to start production Q4 of this year, to be ready, I'd assume, for Q1 release, according to the tracker. Let's just assume it'll release for the Q2 patch, or more likely an X patch of that, or perhaps even next year's Alien Week. That would be a quite a nice surprise and would kind of fit in well, of course. And to be honest, that's just the more likely scenario in my mind. Moving on to components, the Santok features a small radar, computer, two small power plants and coolers, a medium shield generator, Four small fuel intakes, one small fuel tank, quantum drive, jump drive, and quantum fuel tank. Seems like a reasonable loadout for components. Some points to mention include the four small fuel intakes. This would seem like it can get up to a decent speed, or perhaps one fuel intake per thruster. The car to all in comparison has two in-game, but was concepted to have four. The Santac having four could make this an even faster ship, a ship in which only has approximately 33% more mass than the car to all. Lastly, it does have only one small fuel tank compared to the car to all's two. I expect this will change simply because it's a medium fighter. However, the car to all was originally concepted to have four fuel tanks. As always, do take these specs with a pinch of salt, as I am right now. Moving on to the weapons of the Santok, these are basically double that of the car to all of which has two size 3 laser repeaters, where the Santok has four. Additionally, the Santok has four racks of size 2 missiles, with each rack having two missiles. For a medium fighter, this seems okay, where the idea seems to be high damage in two bursts, although I could appreciate more bursts with less damage. So to summarise, the ship would be a reasonable addition to anyone's collection, especially alien collection, 
as there currently isn't an alien ship in this class, although the Santok will require to be flown in a particular way, comparing this to ships such as the Hornet and the Sabre. These both have bigger and more weapons. This is the Santok's competition, as far as I see it. What I like about the Santok in comparison to the two previously mentioned ships is that the Santok has just one type of missiles and one type of guns, unlike the Hornet with its bazillion different weapons. So sure, you get less weapons, but with less weapons you gain agility and maneuverability, and that's the key to this ship. I guess you could see it as a medium fighter dogfighter, and I reckon anyone would be interested in it just for that statement alone, me being one of them. But that's only my opinion. From another perspective, the four racks of two size two missiles are fairly devastating. With a few Tantoks, you could get a decent owl strike to some large ships, such as perhaps a Hamed, if you can get close enough, or even a Perseus. A single digit fleet of these could be underestimated and dangerous from how I see it. That will be all for the Santok. On to other updates, I want to apologise greatly for my lack of uploading. It has now been around half a year, or give or take, since I uploaded. This is as a result of stress, which led to switching jobs, and then a month or so after moving house. Having now settled relatively well, I found myself unmotivated to continue. However, this small community I gathered were of course there to support, and the even smaller community in my Discord, which you should totally join by the way. I found motivation and support from a couple of individuals from such a Discord, so thank you to those two, you know who you are. With that lack of uploading, I found time to make changes to the entire process of producing an upload, including a noise gate to not have to amend my audio in post quite so much. I should also mention the clear edition of After Effects, and a hint of music if I decided to put in. I'm not so sure what I think of this, do let me know in the comments below. Although I fully intend on continuing to upload, the environment I live in is most definitely not suited to recording pretty much 90% of the time, so uploads may not be so common. I want to say monthly uploads at this point, but I'm not going to make any promises just yet. That's just my personal target. Lastly, in the new year I was able to acquire a 3080, and so I previously mentioned that I would make a video comparing performance data between this and a 1080 Ti that I previously have. This is partially off the table due to the 1080 Ti I have now not functioning correctly whatsoever. It might be able to be fixed, but it doesn't look good. Thank you ever so much for watching. Today's video sponsor, as always, is the like button for that glorious YouTube algorithm goodness. That will of course allow this channel, this community, to grow with your support. Obviously don't forget to comment or subscribe if you haven't already. I generally try to upload at this time for now, monthly, so be sure to check back. My name is Jacob, thank you, and goodbye for now.